All right, today we are gonna do a haunted scene in one point perspective. The first thing that we have to do to do a scene, any scene in one point perspective, is give it a horizon line. So grab some kind of a straight edge. If you have a ruler, great. Otherwise, I'm using a folded up piece of paper. We're gonna do the horizon line in pencil because we don't really want it to show. Remember, this is the edge of space. The edge of space doesn't have a big black outline. So I went ahead and just did that in pencil. And since we're near Halloween, I thought it'd be fun to make this kind of a spooky scene. So we're also gonna include like a night feel to this. So let's give it a moon. That's another thing that does not have a black outline. You can do a full moon or a partial moon. It is really up to you. I kind of feel like doing a full moon tonight. So I'm just gonna do that circle in pencil. And remember you could do a, a smiley face moon if you'd rather have one like that. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the Sharpie. We're gonna do this the rest of this scene using black pen. First thing, anything that's above the horizon line is really far away. So there's no perspective to it. We're gonna draw some flat shapes. Let's do a little spooky house. For my spooky house to make it look like a haunted house, I'm gonna do some kind of fun angled lines to be the rectangles of the house. And I'll do a triangle for the top. Sometimes it's kind of fun if the roof curves a little bit. Give that a window or two. And again, this is great. Oh, spooky houses, we don't need a ruler. It's okay if they're crooked and bent. I'm gonna go ahead and color that in black. But I'm not coloring in the windows black. We'll leave those. Let's add some color next time we get to this. And then let's add some more layers to this house. Kind of a boring house. So maybe another rectangle up here. Again, we could do kind of a funky angle. We'll give it a roof too. Maybe I'll make a different window, like a circle this time. Put another one over here. I'm gonna make this one smaller. I really have no big plan here. I just want a fun little house off in the woods. I'm gonna give it a stove pipe. One of those crooked little stove pipes. Something like that maybe. And then I'll color these in black too, except for the windows. What else would we maybe see in this night sky just to make sure this is fun? How about some bats? We could do a bat kind of floating out here somewhere. Let's make them tiny, because remember, this is really far away. So I'll just do a couple swoopy lines like this. And then I'm gonna color that in black. And again, this isn't that important. There's a little bat. Should I do another one maybe over here? And then the little body is just a straight stick. Then I'm doing a curve and a little swoop out there. And then I'll just thicken it up kind of there because it's just supposed to be a hint of a bat way off in the distance and we could always add more later. Now let's get down to the important part. We are learning a little bit about perspective here. Perspective because we're doing one point perspective, well, it needs a point. We need a vanishing point. So from here on out, we're gonna add details using this vanishing point. Stick your point somewhere in the middle. Mine's kind of right here in the middle of that haunted house. All things lead to my haunted house. So hopefully you can see my dot right there, but remember, I'm always going back to that point. We're gonna start with a road. Think about a road in your head. A road, when it's close to us, is gonna be big and wide, but as it gets farther away from us, it gets smaller and smaller until it disappears off into the distance. So I'm gonna use that vanishing point with my pencil. And I'm gonna set my straight edge up against it and you can decide how wide you want the road to feel. I'll just choose an angle and I'm gonna draw that right off the edge of the paper. Notice I switched to pencil again. I'm gonna draw the other part of the road. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. How wide do I want it? Do something like this. Now, let's make this a cobblestone road. I'm gonna grab my Sharpie again. Cobblestone road is a bunch of round stones. I'm gonna put a bunch of round shapes down here. Now notice I'm doing ovals and ellipses and also notice I'm not connecting my circles every time. That's just an artistic trick. Leave a little something to the imagination. I'm gonna fill it in just sort of loosely with some of these round shapes. And you know what, you could get wobbly with them. They don't all need to be perfect ellipses. Let's be a little wobbly. 
But notice that they're squished flat. They're not perfectly round. That would look weird because they're on the ground. They're tilted away from us. So I'm going to have some fun here making some wobbly shapes. Keep some ellipses so that kind of all goes together. But know this. When they're close to you, they're bigger. As they get farther away from us, things get smaller. The rule to this drawing that we're doing, this one point perspective scene, is everything that's at the bottom of the page here has got to be drawn bigger. In the middle is going to be drawn smaller. And way up here, it needs to be drawn very small. So here I go. I'm going to keep doing some of these stones for my cobblestone road. But as I go, I need to start intentionally making them smaller. And sit back for a second. Look, does that look right? Yes, that sort of feels right to my eye. Now, we can't see every stone on a ground as it gets super far away from us. So I'm also going to start doing less. I'll start doing little partial circles. Notice I'm not doing the full stone drawing each time. As I get up here, they're so tiny, they're barely a speck on the paper. Probably need a few more down here, I think. And then there, they're almost nothing. Just little dots, almost. So I'm doing little mini C shapes, so they still feel like a stone. This maintains the feeling of the vanishing point and that one point perspective. Things are bigger here, medium, tiny, very small. The next thing I want to do, I think, is add some spooky trees. Now there's three, three kinds of lines in perspective. Horizontal lines, remember the horizon line. Angled lines, any angled lines should go to your vanishing point. And there are vertical lines straight up and down. A tree should have a vertical line. It should not be at an angle. So we need to start with a straight up and down line. I'm gonna start here. Right. I want to scoot it out a little bit so it's not blocking my house. But right here, that's going to be the base of my tree. I'm going to draw more or less a straight up and down line right here. To turn this into a tree, we're going to use, well, like letters. We're going to use Y's and V's. We'll start making this into something that looks kind of like a Y. I'm going to add on. Now I've got a little V shape. So just think of Y's and V's. We're just going to keep adding on. And you can wobble your pen as you draw because that makes that tree look a little spookier. You can thicken anything up that needs to be thicker. You can add some more Y's and V's. All right, that's not bad. I'm going to draw another tree now. This tree is going to be closer to me. I'm going to put it here. Therefore, if it's closer to me, it has to be bigger than that tree. Here's the base of the tree again. It needs to be thicker. It should also be taller. So if this is how tall this tree is, I need to make this tree maybe this tall. So I'll start with my vertical line. Remember, it can be thicker. And wobbly is good for a spooky scene. I'm going to do a Y shape. Overlapping that other tree, it's okay, it's blocking it a little bit. As branches go up from a tree, as the trunk goes up on a tree, it gets thinner. So make sure down here it's thicker and here it's thinner. Same thing with these branches, I'm going to make them a little thicker here and thinner out there. Y's and V's, so add some letters onto this tree of yours. Don't forget, wobble those lines. Add as many as you think it needs. Okay, I'm happy with that. We're gonna add one more spooky tree. I'm gonna put it closer to me. So I've got a far away, a middle, and a close. Lowest on the page. Same thing, I'm gonna start with the base of the tree. Only now I know it needs to be even thicker. Vertical line. Oh, and it needs to be bigger than this tree. So I need to make sure I make it even taller. It needs to get up all the way up to here. Maybe I'll have it go off the edge of the page. Let's do that. So really thick vertical line. And I'm going to take this and turn it into a Y. Oops, right off the edge of the page. Why not? Right over those trees. Who cares? It's in front of them. So now we've created overlapping. I'm going to bring these, make them get thicker as they come together here so they don't look awkward. Time for more.
more Y's and V's, but these need to be thicker branches. They're closer to us. This tree needs to be much bolder. All right, let's do some more of this using our vanishing points and making things go from bigger to smaller. Let's go ahead. We can make some gravestones. Have a little cemetery out here. So the base of the cemetery stone needs to be straight across. And then we're going to do just a big upside down U. You can add whatever details you want to that cemetery stone. You could also give it some scribbles down at the bottom to make it look like it's in the grass. Now we're going to make another cemetery stone that's going towards the house. So it's going to be farther away. As we go up the page, everything has to get smaller. So let's do another one. I'm going to put it over here, actually. Base of that stone, I'll make this one crooked, and it has to be smaller. And a few scribbles for grass. Let's have some overlapping. So we have placement and overlapping and size. Bigger, smaller, lower, higher. Let's put one up here that's behind this one. It's going to be even smaller. And again, I kind of like the angled ones. Give it some scribbles. You could color these in solid black if you like. Add at least five so we feel like we have a real cemetery. Let's have some out here. Again, let's do some overlapping and let's make them get really small. Put another little one right here. So that's at least five, but I think I feel like doing more. I'm going to put one up here, try to have some that are overlapping. This one's going to go up above the horizon line. Okay, notice again, bigger, smaller. Closer to me, it's lower on the page. These are farther away, they're higher on the page. I'm going to go ahead and flack in the edge of my road. We could give that a few scribbles too. Let's give it some grass on the edge of the road. Notice it's short up here, and as I get down here, my grass needs to be taller. You could even put some under the trees. Okay. What else can we add to a spooky Halloween scene? Or this can just be a night scene. It doesn't have to be spooky. I have an idea. How about some pumpkins? We know how to draw a pumpkin. I'm gonna draw a big old pumpkin right down here. Very lightly, I'm gonna use the tip of my pen so I don't have a really heavy outline on my pumpkin. Notice sometimes I break my line. I don't make it go all the way. Stem. Let's make that a jack-o'-lantern. That's one jack-o'-lantern. I want more. You can't have one of anything in this part of the picture. So we need to make a big one here. I'll give it a little few wiggly grass lines. Let's make one that's higher up on the page and it's behind this pumpkin. So I'm going to start another pumpkin back here. You don't have to turn these into jack-o'-lanterns if you don't want to. I drew this pumpkin smaller. smaller than this one and higher up on the paper. We can do another little one over here. Maybe I'll make this one kind of wide and fat. Feel free to give them some funky stems. Put another one maybe up here. Again, it's going to be smaller because it's farther away from us. Wobbly lines always look good if you've got a haunted scene. And if we want to add one more tree just for fun, let's put a tree in here to fill some of this space. So here's the base of the tree again. Now this tree lines up about with that tree. So let's make sure they're about the same size. Remember there's three lines, horizontal, angled at a diagonal, or straight up and down vertical. So the trees need to make sure they have straight up and down lines for the trunk. And we make the Y wobbly we go off the edge of the page just really finishes off the scene all 
All right, time to fill in our scene. In the background, you either chose to do a full moon or you chose to do a half moon. I think I'm gonna turn mine into the half moon. Seems a little more fun. So I'm erasing that line. Pencil lines show through watercolor. So we are gonna grab our watercolor sets and get them ready to go. Remember, we wake up our watercolors by putting a drop of water in any of the pans, we call them pans, that you're gonna use for this. Let's start in the sky. I'm gonna go ahead, I want you guys to do a wet on wet wash. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave the moon white. So I'm gonna paint water around the moon. And I think I'll start with some yellow out there so the sky looks kind of lit up from the moon. We don't wanna overdo this little scene with color. So we're just adding washes of color. There's my yellow haze around the moon. I'm gonna keep going here. More water, working in a circle around the moon. So from the moon, we're gonna start with that light color yellow. I'm painting right over all of my drawing. That's why we used a Sharpie, isn't that genius? Sharpie is a permanent marker, and so it won't change or move as we add in water and our watercolors. So I'm adding lots of water here. I'm gonna add a little more yellow, and then I'm actually gonna switch to orange. I think I'm gonna do most of this scene with some orange. So I'm grabbing some orange there, and I want them to mix together, which is why it's very important that the paper is wet. So just having fun here, not worrying about where it bleeds. Lots of water so that it doesn't look streaky. So add a little more water and just kind of move that around. And the fact that we left those windows kind of open will make them look like they're reflecting some of the light from outside or maybe that they're lit up from the inside. Now here's one of the things I wanted to try. While the paint is wet, I'm gonna try adding some clouds to make the sky look even spookier. It's gonna look kind of like a weird haunted sunset. Finishing out the sky over here. Like I said, lots of water. This picture is not about our watercolor amazingness. It's about our drawing and our use of perspective. I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple and I'm gonna dab it in sideways. Let's hope I don't ruin my picture, we'll see. I'm just gonna go like this. Do you guys see I'm moving my brush left and right? Left and right, and I'm letting it bleed right into all that orange. And in fact, if you do it and you're like, ah, add a little more water. Dab some water on there and let it bleed around so it sort of looks like clouds, spooky clouds on a spooky night. Now it's very important that the page is wet so that we don't overdo it with our clouds. So I just put some muddy water on there by accident. I'm gonna add just that touch of purple again. And I'm just gonna let it bleed around. It's just supposed to look misty. It's not supposed to look like a big puffy cloud. Different kinds of clouds, right? If you're feeling brave, you could even put one over the moon a little bit, but I'm not feeling that brave, so I'm not going to. I'm going behind the cloud right there. All right, we don't want to overdo it in the sky, so let's stop that. We're going to go ahead and use those same colors to paint the ground. So again, wet on wet. I think this time I'm going to add some brown to my orange. I'm just painting right over everything. We're just finishing up this picture with some color for the fun of it. So lots of water on my page. I'm going with the orange again, especially over those pumpkins, right? While this is still wet, I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown, especially down here to darken in the picture a little bit, make sure it's really watery. So mixing brown with my orange down here. And my pumpkins deserve some orange, so I'll paint a little extra just on them and let it bleed. I'm not trying to make them any more important than anything else in the picture. Okay, and over here on this side, same thing. I'm gonna get it wet, add that orange. Time 
Time to do the road. I think we'll go with the orange and brown again. Because it's funny how at night, how all the colors just sort of bleed together. Nothing is a normal color. But I'm going to stick with more of the brown this time. And maybe I'll do a little bit of black with my brown. I'm going to mix it on the palette tray, which you can't see on the screen, but I'm taking a little bit of brown and black, mixing them together up here before I put them on the page, create kind of a new color. Give this road a little attention. And maybe I'll use just a little bit of black on some of my cobblestones. Whoops, I don't like that. It looks too much, right? I'm going to just use my watery brush, swirl that around. We'll let there be some dark down here, but I'm not going to overdo it. That was too much. Lastly, before we're done, nothing looks spookier than big, long shadows. So the moon is up here above the horizon line. Let's give some shadows using our black paint. Now black is really strong in watercolors, so I am going to put it on the palette tray and I'm going to add a lot of water. I don't want big distracting shadows. We just want a little bit of a shadow. So I've watered down that black right there on the tray and now I'm going to use it. Everything needs a shadow. So let's pretend this is where the light's coming from. Well, it is where the light's coming from. So let's pull our shadows away from the moon. On every single thing, we're going to give it a long shadow. Just like that. Even the pumpkins. Pumpkins get shadows. Just pulling that black paint away from the moon. Over here, let's maybe go a different direction. Or we could go the same. Let's go the same direction so it doesn't look weird. Same thing. Oops, that tree goes off the page. Not much we can do about it. So there we go. Now we have long, spooky shadows. And probably the haunted house should have one too, right? Give it a little shadow. That got too watery on me, so I take my brush. I'm going to squeeze off the extra moisture with my fingertip, and I'm going to use it now to lift some of that water back out. That was too much, and it's not going to look like much when it's done, so I'll bring it back out and try it again. See if I can get that a little more controlled so it doesn't just look like a blob. All right, and I think this spooky scene is done.